So let's move on to number four. Surprise, surprise. Team India. Ton of experience. So Sharda, why don't we start with you? Or some surprising selection calls. So I'll let you speak to them. Two surprising calls, you know, first uh, leaving of Jemima Rodericks. You know, uh, in my opinion, uh, not only she's very capable with the bat, you know, to score some quick runs, she's an excellent outfielder as well. We saw the India, New Zealand ODA series, a lot of catches in the outfield uh, being put down. Uh, probably, uh, you know, uh, Jemima Rodriguez could have made the difference. But all said that and done, uh, you know, the other glaring thing, uh, you know, I, even though uh, Estika Bhatia is there, you know, they can score the runs. Jemima's exclusion was a bit surprising. And, you know, uh, a bigger thing than that is Shika Pandey's exclusion, you know. Uh, we in New Zealand conditions, in my opinion, we need to have two premier experienced seamers. Uh, one would be, of course, uh, Julan Goswami, and uh, the second one could have been Shika Pandey with the third seamer, you know, having to choose between uh, Pooja Vastrakar, Meghna Singh, or even Rain Ka. But uh, two premier seamers uh, should have been uh, a compulsory choice for Team India going to New Zealand. I know we are a spin heavy squad, we, are, we depend a lot on spin. Even we bowl the spinners in power play overs as well, even although we are playing in New Zealand. But uh, all said that and done, Shika Pandey is experienced and probably, you know, if we come to a situation uh, where we, you know, need to restrict runs where a team is chasing and, for example, they need 40 runs of 30 balls, you have Julan who can hold up at one end. And, uh, you know, uh, I think probably at that point of time, India can miss uh, someone like Ashika Pandey because she is very experienced. She bowled, uh, she did a really good job in the uh, T20 World Cup, uh, especially in that game against New Zealand where they required you know, 11 or 12 runs of the last over. And, you know, she kept uh, banging those wide yorkers. And uh, she has that, you know, since she has only the ball coming in recently, she has developed the leg cutter also, uh, which is which goes away from the right hand. So, uh, Shika Pandey uh, will definitely be missed. Uh, so, this... Uh, India's combination is going to be very crucial, whether uh, you know they are going with a two-pace attack or a three-pace attack playing two spinners, uh, whatever it is, uh, we need to get the right combination out in the park. Uh, we saw some uh, surprise calls uh, you know, in the warm-up game today. We saw Yastika Bhatia uh, open with Smriti Mandana. I know in my opinion, uh, that's not a bad call at all. Uh, because, you know, uh, Shefali Verma has not exactly been in very, very good form. So, it's okay to probably give her a break for one or two games. And, you know, uh, once she gets back in, it will be interesting to see uh, where Yastika plays. I think uh, Yastika and Spriti Mandana will be a good opening choice. And uh, probably if Mithali Raj and Harman could also, you know, bat at number three and number four, where they are really good. Their stats are really good. Mithali is an excellent player at the number three spot. And Harman has very good stats and has her comfort level at uh, the number four spot. So, you now Deepthi coming in at number three, they'll have to really decide uh, with the combination, their strategies, and especially the field placements as well. You know, whether you're going to have a four on the leg side field if the slot sweep is being played. Because we saw New Zealand scoring a lot out of the slot sweep shot. In New Zealand, they have this 65 meters square boundaries, which is very short. So, uh, it will be no surprise if we see the Indian spinners being slogged. So, you know, uh, with uh, someone like a Poonam Yadav or a Rajeshwari Gaikwad who is slightly slower through the air, uh, India need to get all their right strategies in place, you know, have a deep square leg, deep mid wicket, country and even long on in place, you know, things like that. They need to uh, have extreme clarity on what exactly needs to be executed and the right combination. So, if India are able to do that, and the other thing, uh, you know, is the run rate in the middle overs. We often get to you know, blazing starts, uh, 10 overs, at the end of 10 overs, we are 70, 75 for no loss. And suddenly, you know, after a one or two wicket falls, the run rate really drops to, you know, four and a half, five. So, during the middle overs, this 15 to 35 overs, it's going to be really crucial. And uh, Harman Preet Kaur. Uh, and Mitha Miraj, of course, they have to shoulder a lot of responsibility in scoring you know, runs at least at five and a half and six per over. And another important thing is, uh, you know, India are going to be playing all their games as day-night encounters, right? So, dew will be something, you know, that needs to be taken into account whether India uh, play three paces. That might be ideal because, you know, the spinners might find it really difficult to grip the ball. Uh, so, considering all these factors, uh, India, you know, to make it to the top four, they definitely have the capability and the talent, no doubts in that, absolutely. But 
you need to get the best combination the best strategy and you need to have a lot of you know plan a b and c so if all of this falls in place definitely india can be you know one of the uh, sites to look forward to in this Neharana or Richa Ghosh, somebody like that, will they have a impact this year? Uh, let, let us hope that they are able to have some impact because of what we saw of Richa Ghosh in the New Zealand series, it was absolutely amazing. The kind of fearless cricket that Indian women are expected to play, she is showcasing that how fearless cricket, how a brand of fearless cricket can be played. It was amazing to watch her. And we have to, we have to, you know, accept the fact that she is just 18 years old, so she is still getting her hands in behind the stumps. She still has room for improvement, but there is no doubt that she is going to be a talent to watch out for. Also, her experience in the WBBL might have helped Richa Ghosh about her hitting abilities. So she is definitely going to be a player to watch out for. And with regards to Snehrana, of course, she has made her international comeback after six long years, and it has been a wonderful comeback in the England series. We all saw what she can do with both bat and ball. She is consistent with the line and lens, bowling the right arm off spin. And of course, in the lower middle order, she can be a handy customer. She can hold the innings and as well play the role of a finisher if given the opportunity. So I'm definitely looking forward to these two players. And apart from this, of course, all eyes will be on Miljul, right? Mithali Raj and Julan Goswami, who are probably playing their last World Cup. Both of them have been a part of the two finals in 2005 and 2017, but unfortunately, they were not able to get their hands on that coveted World Cup trophy. So let us hope that they are able to, you know, put their best foot forward and get the trophy for India. Because Julan Goswami is going to lead the India's bowling attack and Nithali Raj is going to lead the batting attack. Of course, all the batters revolving around her. And as Sharda rightly mentioned that number three, could be the batting position for Mithali Raj, which she has not played for quite some time. Because we have to consider that out of the seven centuries that she has had, five centuries have come at the number three position. So we all know what Mithali Raj can do at that number three, which is the all important position in the batting lineup. So yes, these will be the players to watch out for for me. Excellent. And Vishak, let's bring you in. Uh, Mithali Raj was pretty vocal in, uh, I think Sharda touched upon a point about middle over run rate. But then Mithali Raj was particularly keen on telling that, look, winning the game is important than strike rate. And second question I also have for you is Harman Preet Kaur, who definitely did well in the last game. But will her form worry you from a middle order point of view? It's like Mithali Raj, the way she bats a little too slow for me with the, with her experience. I think she just uh, if Smriti Mandana gives a good start at the start uh, and then I think we need somebody in the middle order take uh, take that momentum forward. I think Mithali Raj is just a little too slow. She bats at 60-70 strike rate usually. So if, if she can just up it, I'm not saying her uh, to go at 90-95. At least if she can bat at around 80 strike rate, ro rotate the strike a little more often, that would be much better. So just sc score around 4-5 to five runs and over and then it will be ideal for the end over batters to come and go bang bang and Harman Preet Kaur after that big innings in Australia and the semi-finals I have not seen any big contribution from her that's definitely a cause of concern I think there were a few things saying that if somebody like Jemima Rodriguez can be dropped for poor form why not Harman Preet Kaur so there are a lot of talks going on about her but good that she scored a hundred today but it'll be it'll still be interesting like how she comes shapes up if she if she Mithali Raj, Harman Preet Kaur, Smriti Mandana and all play really well. I think we can have, we and if we put good scores, uh, we can back our spinners to easily defend it. And mind you, this is actually in New Zealand and this is one of the teams we depend heavily on our spin attack and not our pace attack. So I think we will need very good scores uh, for the, so that our spinners can come into the game and then uh, defend. That would be our best chance. Excellent. So the big question, of course, all four of us will have biases towards this team. So Sharda, where do you predict? It's difficult, you know, for I really want India to finish in the top four, but uh, you no, know, it it, uh, it has to be either India or New Zealand. But I think you know, uh, India with the experience and the kind of cricket that you know we played in the last two games, I think India will make the cut into the final four. So of course, the heart says it is going to be top two. But then the brain somehow knows that it is going to be top four. Vishak, any chance of facing Australia in the finals? I'm not sure, but I would definitely give a top four because 
we have one advantage that is we have just uh, got acclimatized to the conditions because we have played a series over there just which no other team has excellent okay so that was india